everyone, it's Tusk here and we're back at it again with CK3 but this time we've got the new update coming in with the appearance changing and I just wanted to highlight in this video some really really interesting and cool things you can do with it but still have Iron Man mode on. Now Iron Man mode I personally think makes the game more fun, not only does it give you achievements and all that but it makes the game more challenging and without staying in within that limitation. We'll just uh, quickly go into the creator and I'll show you some interesting ways to min max your characters for as strong as possible but still stay within the limitations. Now the first thing I wanted to mention which I, I just figured out uh, which is just mind blowing to me is as you, you'll see there's a customization point if you drop it down it goes down but if you put it all the way up it goes way into the negative and you get way more points now at first i thought oh fuck i'm gonna die like i'm, I'm actually gonna die uh, immediately but that's not what happens so what you can actually do with this is you if you want to save points from it you can put all insane traits the best uh, continental traits and uh if i can just find uh genius here even though it's stupidly expensive and you are actually still within the limitations now you might think it's stupid but if you do this you're still alive long enough to pass on your genetics and because you get the strength strength and blood uh, perk it allows you to um basically kickstart a perfect uh, genetic dynasty now if we go in we see that we're actually fine even though we're 120 years old even if i pass some time it still says fine we can immediately strengthen blood right from the get-go and we don't have any uh, downsides to us at all we have no personality traits obviously which I guess I guess it makes it a little bit boring but you don't have to do all these traits if you wanted to strengthen blood all you would have to do is put beautiful which is the cheapest out of the three of these hail and uh, quick and you'd immediately have the continental traits but the same thing is that you can just start at 120. obviously this does seem a bit dodgy i don't think this is how the game is going to run like being 120 is insane i think maybe maybe they could let you live maybe one year or something or something along those lines maybe they could put it to that but being able to live i've lived for maybe what 20 years before look now my health is good because i've got strong blood it's just insane and I'm 121 years old. And as you, as I said before, you get all these perks. I just get 20 perks immediately. We can just choose whatever we want to do. And so this is the first thing I wanted to show you. Is this will give you an insanely good start at the uh, to start off the game with strong with strength and bloodline. Uh, what I want to show now is some other ideas that um, if you want to make it a bit more realistic, because I don't think that's how the game is going to work. But you can definitely stay w easily within. A, 400 points now the other suggestion i wanted to go for it was actually starting at zero now the good thing about this is that as you grow up or at least starting at three two options but obviously you get more points if you start at zero so you might as well but you drop all your base points because you roll base points based on every year that goes past every year that you age your character will roll base points i think it's uh i can't remember if it's three or four of it, I think it's 0 to 4 or 0 to 3, I can't remember. Uh, and uh, you don't have to put any points into personality or education. So what you can do is you can actually put all your points in here. Obviously it's not as insane as 120, but I don't think the game's going to work like that. It doesn't make sense. I think your character really should just die at 120 within like a day. <laughs> Unless you've got like insane health perks. Um, so that, that you could literally just throw in an insane amount of uh, stuff here into this point um just to mention it as well if you do put base points in as a, a child it takes a pers i'm pretty sure it's a cut so if you start at zero for example you get like 10 percent of the base points you actually put in so you don't get anything it doesn't pay off um same if you start if you start at like nine it's like you get half the base points if you start at like 14 then you get i think you I think it's like 90 percent or 80 percent of the base points like so it does not work straight up you do not get the full base points if you're under 16. if you're 15 i think you lose one point in each so i think it's only five ten percent um because i tried i tried it off because you know with the education traits i wouldn't have to pay for it 
and then you put in a pretty decent uh, trainer and you roll it and you pray for the the best trait you can get usually it's about three or four as long as you've got a decent uh, thing which i'll show you in another video uh, how to get the best start um and the best counter at the start of the game so the another thing i wanted to show was how to rush getting as much piety as possible now there's a few ways to do this so first you have probably what everyone's going to think of is the wise man so if you go to oh, what the it's the taoists there's a certain trait they have in their religion which gives you five piety a month which is pretty insane but it's an unreformed religion which means that you converting you'd have to convert first and that makes the wise man trait pretty much useless after that so what i would recommend is that you <laughs> is that you can just stack traits so you can just stack all these traits and uh, it can be insane but what's even better is if you go say you're tribal which is probably for the best if you're going to do it this way and you go insular because insular gives you an insane amount especially if you do vows of poverty and you have all these traits except for honest because it doesn't count and generous generous gives you two piety if you make a vow of poverty it gives you another two piety so you end up right at the start of the game with like eight piety a month and before you know it you're going to be a paragon of virtue by like 35 uh, which will especially if you keep doing pilgrimages um if you are zero as well and you put all these traits in at the start you won't roll any traits as far as i'm aware or at least from the way i've tested it you will not get any personality traits uh if you put four you might get it if you get three i'd imagine because it's pot it's meant to be possible i think it's like a two percent chance of you getting four traits naturally i can't remember though um but this is heavily what i would recommend obviously if you really 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 wanted to you could theoretically put zealous in because as much as it prevents you from converting uh, it doesn't prevent you uh, in cost from um, uh, from creating your own religion so this would be the best method to get pi you can easily get 10 pi a month this way if you throw in a composite because there's no limit to the amount of personality traits you can get in this it really is off the charts how fast you can create a brand new religion with no problems now the other uh, feature especially if you're playing tribal especially if you're playing tribal is you just put everything to zero let's just take this out and you just max everything into marshall and just grab a what you'll notice is that as things go up the amount of points that it takes to put more into marshall starts to get like absurd so there we go 66 to 83 it's still not worth putting raffle in yet oh wait, no actually never mind it is so now that we're hitting 32 to 49 that's 15 points oh, don't, no, no it's not no, it's not. no it, it really isn't it's 17 points now we're hitting the point where two points is worth more than raffle so what we want to do is we want to start putting traits in now and what you can do is you can just stack this so we'd say we take zealous brave and uh what else ambitious could be good but it only gives you one one marshal but because especially if you're um a tribal and you just stack everything into marshal you're such so insanely strong that you could as long as you do the tricks at the start where you get insane prowess knights you will end up smashing armies three times your size it, it is truly off the charts um now the other idea with this is that if you stack this right you can add another instead of going such insane marshal because you do not need this much right instead put in traits that you get at the start which gave you prestige if you do this for example arrogant arrogant is absolutely absurd especially if you're starting as a count or chieftain uh, as tribal you get three more armies just from this alone but because of the other traits uh, i think you could put in august if you wanted of course it's 50 points but you could do it and then you could also put in all the other uh, ideas you could see taking these as a thing but it makes it way more interesting and of course the other one you could put in if i can just find it is born in purple which gives you another half prestige so the army you can raise with this is absolutely absurd it's also one of the reasons i believe if you're starting tribal that uh, starting with the prestige and uh, it doesn't matter what your education trait is you're far better off starting with the one prestige every month to get that bigger army um, that was the other suggestion now the other thing i wanted to suggest is if you play a woman but anywhere that is uh, where it's mostly men men power men favored men men powered play as a woman obviously make yourself young but then and then go down this route 
Now, anyone who is heterosexual will like you the moment you're 16. Now, there we go. So right now, straight off the bat, anyone who is heterosexual will have a 70 opinion of us. So if we pair that up, say, with high diplomacy, then everyone's going to favour us. All the leaders are going to favour us. We'll have an insane amount of alliances. Right? It's, it's, it Bales has stacked the odds against everyone. Alliances will be no problem whatsoever. Um, the other thing you can stack it with is intimidation. So if you go down dread, so for example, marriages, uh, if a person is terrified, they get 150 ch uh, plus 150 chance of acceptance, which is you're not going to get that standard. That's the, the, um, even with the highest uh, renown, that doesn't even come close uh, to what a terrified. So if you went down to an entry group with seducer and terrified everyone with some terrifying traits or dread traits or wrathful, uh, sadistic, and say obviously you wouldn't want this to be a sin if you're a religion and say arbitrary, these would give you a flat of what? 70 dread, just straight up. So everyone's going to be terrified of you. Everyone's going to like you. And everyone will just accept what you do. Straight up. Now, the other secret thing that I, I couldn't really see how I measure it is that the way terrified characters work is it's based on boldness. So, as far as I'm aware, I could be wrong about this, is it's their personality traits based on your personality traits Whoever is more bold gets an advantage on dread. So if your dread is 20 higher than their boldness, then they are uh, intimidated by you. If it's 45 higher, then they are terrified of you. That's why I think Craven gives an insanely low boldness. I think it should give you negative boldness if I'm not mistaken about that. Uh, the other... And that, that, as far as I'm aware, would be insane. You, with you diplomacy, we'll just check this right now, actually. If we go 399, we'll just finalize this. Play. So now we have a character that is 16 years old. She is beautiful, etc., etc. And if we go to... Let's roll this first. Oh, he's only 14, that's why. He's, 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 he's not heterosexual. So he, he gets a, a massive, massive advantage of plus 30, plus 40 uh, on opinion. Usually he would hate it. Generally, it puts everyone in an extremely high favor. So plus 40 here. This person is already intimidated by us, even though our dread is only one. Like I said, it's to do with boldness. That's because he's shy. I'm pretty sure that also gives a really low amount of boldness. Uh, there's another, if you give other example, oh, he's 13, he's not going to be with it. He's, see, he's, he is not heterosexual, therefore he does not benefit from it. But because if you're playing in standard settings, it is much rarer for uh, uh, than the standard heterosexual. Other person also, even though he would generally be against us uh, because he's zealous and we are, as you can see, insular, he is actually in the green. Even though he has a massive minus 35 from uh, zealous, in terms of that, but this really gives you advantage, especially if you're going down the diplomacy tree and trying to make a ton of friends. Play a dread or a dread sort of game, uh, and that will really help you out. So you can mix between uh, play a bit like a diplomacy game, but with high dread. So right now, if we just put the game real fast, our dread's going to skyrocket up to 70 naturally, and we would do not even have to worry about it. And naturally, people around us will start to become scared of us. I bet you some of our vassals are already scared of it even though our dread isn't even that high or at least it should be soon oh okay we'll just leave that now yep already she is intimidated by us well, he's terrified but he's craven so that doesn't really count because pretty much he's terrified of pretty much everyone terrified he's shy he's being declared war on by france that's standard shit in this these days uh, intimidated as well, he's also intimidated and he's just content and cynical. Also intimidated, lustful, deceitful. As it rises, it gets absolutely insane and they will accept everything from you. So you spreading your dynasty, even as a count, does not become a problem. Now, the one last thing I wanted to suggest, which is kind of more of a meme idea, is the health point system. So if we go to temperate right now, what you'll see is that 
it gives a small boost. This small boost is represented as a number of 0.25. If we want more health, obviously the Temperate is the only one that actually gives a health boost out of all the traits. If you go to Stubborn, it's only against resistance, so only if you're ill. But from all the other traits, there actually is quite a lot that give flat health traits. As you know, these are all disease resistances, which is actually it's good to have one. Uh, unless you get the Bubonic Plague, then yeah, yeah, having a lot of them would be good. But it's better to just have one and then just have a bunch of flat bonuses, because that was to help anyway. Um, for for example, let's go through them all to get them. Obviously, Herculean, pure blooded, strong. You get immediately that is a huge boost, which is a flat one increase on your health. You start with one, by the way, uh, and obviously another point two five that makes one point five. And now we have an extra two health immediately from this uh, this alone. What you'll notice is that once you get all these all this stuff, you will have um, and obviously I've collected them. You will have excellent health which uh, pretty much you're just not going to die even if you got severely injured in battle you're still not going to die now the last thing to mention that you might want to do is pick, pick witch this will immediately get your witch coven pretty much it's, if you start with sons and daughters uh, at least three of them you need four for a witch coven to work but the other thing to consider the other religions which is if I remember correctly it's a form of Hinduism I think uh, one of the ones in India. I think it's this one. You can choose a personal avatar. I'll just you know I'll, I'll just highlight this and show it. You can do standard witch coven. I need to oh, so it doesn't sorry God. So I need to convert these sons. Once I convert them to witchcraft, uh, they will be enough to start the witch coven. And as you can see right now, the witch coven gives a medium boost, but also that fertility obviously is just very nice. But the medium boost is if you're going to stack this way, you'd be able to live maybe <laughs> a hundred and who knows how long you could live. I mean, even right now, 54 years old and we're excellent and full of vigor because you have that many health traits. Now, if you wanted to, which if you're going to do this, you might as well mean it all the way and go down the, the studies route or learning and stack these two, which will give you another whole one point of uh, health, which is just absurd. If you stack all these, even if you get hit by the bubonic plague, there is zero percent chance it's going to kill you. The zero, the bubonic plague gives you, I think it's a three point two five minus modifier, which is why if you're a standard playthrough, you just die. Uh, <laughs> there's pretty much no chance of you surviving that unless you have an insanely good uh, healer. Uh, I've had it happen once, I think, where I did drastic measures, and I was in my sixties and uh, I lived of miraculously. It just cured immediately, but she had 31 learning, if I remember correctly, and I did the... Uh, uh, pretty much, this protects you from dying. <laughs> I think that's the best way to see You're going to have a character that's going to live a hell of a long time. So I just remembered that I forgot to show you the... Hinduism trait, which obviously <laughs> would have been good if I actually proved my... Uh, what I was saying. Uh, if we go to determine Bhakti, and we want to play back to it, we'll get a bunch of options here. And I think it's Ganga gives you a medium health boost, which is absolutely insane. This is probably one of my favorite because it gives an incredible amount of uh, advantages here. So you can see that gives you taxis, this gives you uh, Marshall. But this one is the one I think is the most insane, uh, getting a medium boost. Obviously, it's nowhere near as good as the Witch Coven because the Witch Coven gives it to your entire dynasty. And the more dynasty points you get, the more, uh, the more uh, renown you'll have. In that really, really helps. Okay, so the last thing I want to highlight is the most obvious and kind of straight to the point one, which is that if you just take all of the intrigue uh, traits, which is the last one, Kalis, uh, and just max your intrigue skill to the roof, drop everything else down. Don't give, a, don't care at all, and you you manage to roll a good. Uh, Intrigue, uh, oh wait, that's actually, I'm, I'm, I'm missing one, I'm missing Calm, it's only one Intrigue, right, can I, can, can I speak again, can I, yes, 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 there we go, right, uh, obviously, Ambitious, I can't really get that in, but if you go for all the Intrigue ones, then you're gonna end up, oh wait, 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 I'm, I'm a bloody idiot, there we go, right, lost this, right, this <laughs> gives you, in fact, 40 intrigue right from the start of the game. This allows you to kill everybody. 
not a single person is going to be able to live. Especially once you do this. And if you make yourself older, so that you start with Schemer, it, it, it doesn't even matter anymore. Uh, you're just going to end up with quick and saying, now we just roll this quickly. She's obviously older, but now we can also increase. Now we have, right at the start of the game, in 1066, 51 Intrigue. 